Hi, I'm Tria, and today I'm going to talk about everything I did to get into Oxford Medical School. I'm going to talk about my grades, my extracurricular activities, and some of the things that I learned along the way. I don't remember wanting to be a doctor very early on in life. One day when I found a diary that I had when I was about six, I wrote that I wanted to be a doctor, so clearly the ambition was in there somewhere. But I didn't resurface again until I was about 13 or 14, deciding my GCSE subjects. For GCSEs, I took 11 subjects, so I took the compulsory subjects of English, language, English literature, maths, biology, chemistry, physics. I also took German, Latin, history, geography and further maths. I think I was one of those people who was so determined to get good grades that I actually worked too hard for GCSEs. I created a crazy revision schedule with sometimes over 10 hours of work a day and it really wasn't sustainable. I ended up getting unwell before my exams, but because of the number of hours of revision I put in, I managed to get pretty good grades. So back when I was doing GCSEs, we didn't have numbers, we had grades. So an A star is equivalent of an 8 or a 9. So I got 10 A stars at GCSEs. This was one of the reasons why I ended up choosing Oxford instead of Cambridge, because I'd read that Oxford should take into consideration your GCSE grades when inviting people for interview. The summer after my GCSEs, I had a much needed rest and I watched hours and hours of Netflix. Towards the end of the summer, I did a week's work experience in a labour ward in a local hospital. Now this was a really great experience because it was my first taste of medicine. I saw a baby being born for the first time. I really remember that experience because at one point I was the only other person in the room. That didn't scare me off medicine. And to be honest, to this day, I still find obstetrics and gynaecology one of the most interesting parts of medicine. And looking back, it is probably because my interest started when I was 16 at this work experience placement. So after GCSEs came A-levels. When I was at school, we had AS levels in year 12 and then A2 levels in year 13. So I chose four subjects in year 12. They were biology, chemistry, physics and maths. I really love science and I wasn't willing to let go of any of them. So for most medical schools, chemistry is a compulsory subject plus a few other science subjects such as maths or biology or physics. In year 12, I would say I was about 70% set on medicine. The other 30% was physics because that was something I really enjoyed as well. But I think the reason why I chose medicine was because I found it quite reassuring how there was a set career path for you. You go to medical school, then you do foundation training, you go to specialty training and you become a consultant or a GP. I really liked that structure and I really liked how I could see my future. And at the time for me, doing a science degree such as physics was quite scary because I didn't have a clear view of my future. Obviously now that I've graduated from medical school, I know that medicine isn't so straightforward. You don't always have to follow this specific pathway. At 16 or 17 years old, that was definitely very reassuring for me. I also really liked the human side of medicine because I really love talking to people and being in caring environments. And that's something that I didn't really think I'd get just by doing a science degree. So my dilemma of physics versus medicine was pretty much sorted out in year 12. So at the end of year 12, I had my AS level exams, which I actually ended up working less hard for in comparison to my GCSEs. I think it was the combination of doing less subjects and also just taking a bit of a chill pill. But I still worked really hard and managed to get four A's. Back then, A was the highest grade that you could get in AS. And I also forgot to mention this earlier, but I did an EPQ. It's called an Extended Project Qualification, and it's basically a 5,000 word essay on a topic of your choice. Now this is essentially like another AS level, and I really regretted doing it at the time because it just felt like so much work and took up so much of my time, and it was just a lot. You also have to do a presentation, and I just felt like when everything was gearing up for my university applications, I also had to do this extra project that I just just signed up for for fun. In the end, however, I did learn a lot about referencing, about how to find sources and use a bibliography, and it was also a sentence in my personal statement that some interviewers at Oxford found interesting. So the topic that I chose was about 3D printing in medicine and how that is going to revolutionise organ transplants. But if you ask me, is an EPQ really worth it? I would say probably not, but I can get into that more in another video if you want. Alongside my AS subjects, I did some extracurricular activities and supercurricular activities too. It's really important to have extra things to demonstrate your skills such as leadership, organisation, empathy and resilience. 
So some of the things that I did in year 12 were I was a leader of my school's MedVet Society. So that was a society for GCSE and A-level students who wanted to study medicine or veterinary science at university. And in that role, I organized sessions on things like medical ethics and the BMAT and the UK CAT, and also organized a mock interview each year with teachers from the school. Because I love writing, I also participated in the school magazine where I was the science editor. And this really helped me to keep up my essay writing skills. So obviously I I just did science subject at A level and little did I know that in Oxford I'd end up writing lots and lots of essays. So on top of that I played the flute and the violin and was in an orchestra and I also did some rowing even though I wasn't very good at it. I've made a video about what things you need to put into a personal statement for medical school so go and check that out. Another thing that I did throughout GCSEs and also in year 12 was volunteering. So I volunteered at a care home that was literally a two minute walk from my school. So I'd go there once a week after school and basically just sit with the residents make them tea, talk about their lives and occasionally play the flute. I would recommend doing some kind of volunteering in a caring position if you can. This will look really good on your personal statement but also will help you to decide whether you actually like talking to people and being in that kind of caring position. So now we've reached the summer after year 12. Now this was definitely the hardest summer of school because this is the real crunch time for medical school applicants. In this summer I did some more work experience, I did some volunteering, I did my UK CAT exam and I wrote my personal statement. So the UK CAT, which is now called the UCAT, is an exam that you have to sit for certain medical schools and you can take it at any time you like within a certain window. Now the advice that I had heard and also that I agree with is that you should try to take the exam as early as possible. So I took it at about the 20th of August so I had it out of the way before I got back to school. And now this was the best decision I made because as soon as I started year 13 again, things started piling up like crazy. I had the BMAT to think about, interviews, my UCAS application. I had to complete my personal statement. So now we've reached year 13. I decided to continue all four AS levels. So I did biology, chemistry, physics, and maths A level. Now in my school, most people decided to drop one AS level and continue with three subjects to A2. For me, that meant that I would have to give up physics because chemistry was compulsory. It makes sense to study biology for medicine and also maths just felt like one of those really core subjects that everyone should know. So that really left physics as the fourth subject, but because I loved it so much, I wanted to keep it. And I actually don't regret that. Although it meant that I had no free time at school, and I was really busy but I really found it so interesting and I think it gave me an edge when I was applying to Oxford as well because being able to do four A2 subjects demonstrates your academic rigour and that's something that Oxford really look at. Also when I went to interview a lot of people found it interesting that I did all four subjects to A level. Also relatively rarer for medical school applicants to study physics so I ended up answering a lot of questions about physics and how it relates to medicine. I remember for example having to draw a picture of an eye and then talk talking about light refraction through the lens. It was also time to pick some medical schools. So normally students applying to university through UCAS can apply to five universities, but for medical school applicants, you can only apply to four. So I chose Oxford and then the other three, I decided to apply to London universities. So I applied to Imperial, King's College London and Queen Mary's. So another way that I chose the universities was that I decided to apply to two BMAT universities and two UK CAT universities. So at the time, Oxford and Imperial were both BMAT and King's College and Queen Mary's were both UK CAT. I thought it was better not to have all your eggs in one basket. My advice would be to go half and half between the two. So for the fifth option, a lot of people choose biomedical science, but I didn't really want to study that. So I decided to apply to natural sciences at UCL. Now this may seem a little bit silly because obviously my personal statement was geared towards medicine and natural science is really different, but I remember not caring about that and just deciding to throw in an application anyway. UCL did end up getting back to me saying that they liked my application, but they wanted me to write a separate personal statement saying why I wanted to study natural sciences. But by the time that they told me that, I had already gotten some offers from medical schools. So for Oxford and for medical school, the UCAS deadline was in October. And then I didn't end up hearing back from anywhere until the end of November. This felt like a really, really long time, especially when I had friends who applied for other subjects, getting interviews and getting offers back. In fact, my best friend had gotten offers from all five of her universities 
before I'd heard back from anywhere. It really is a trying time, but I spent that time trying to prepare for interviews. Finally in November I heard that I'd got an interview at Oxford and that was going to be in December. I remember distinctly the interviews were on the 13th and 14th of December and I had to stay overnight in one of the colleges. I can talk about this more in another video, but the way that the Oxford interviews works is that you get interviewed at two different colleges. So you'll get two interviews at one college and two at the other. So I had applied to St John's College, Oxford, for no particular reason, mainly just because it looked pretty and it was one of the richer colleges. But I ended up being housed in Queen's College and my first two interviews were on Sunday night at Queen's and the second two were on Monday at St John's. I then eventually heard back from the other medical schools in about January. I then heard back from Imperial inviting me for interview in January and then I heard back from Queen Mary's inviting me for interview in February and also King's for an interview in February. And my December, January and February were full of interviews. I think it was quite nice I said I got the Oxford interview out of the way at first because to me that was the scariest one and although the interviews were really scary they weren't as horrendous as some of the horror stories that I'd heard about before so I felt like if I could do the Oxford interviews I could get through anything else. So when January came round the Imperial interview was actually pretty okay and I came out feeling quite happy. I remember walking through South Kensington just feeling like I had nailed this. I'm going to talk about it in more detail in another video but to prepare for my interviews I did a lot of practice interviews with my parents and my teachers. So my first interview was at Oxford and my first offer was also from Oxford. I remember not quite being able to believe that this was actually happening because it's something that I had wanted for such a long time. In January I ended up getting an offer from Imperial as well. I then got an offer from Queen Mary's but from King's College I was put on the waiting list. But at this point I didn't really care because I'd had offers from my top three universities and was absolutely over the moon. So I accepted the offer for Oxford because I did four subjects the offer for me was A star AAA and then although I really wanted to go to Imperial as my second choice I couldn't really put that as my backup because the offer for Imperial was also A star AA so I ended up rejecting the Imperial offer and putting Queen Mary's as my second choice which was AAA. So after all the offers were in I then had to focus on my A levels again now, I had really not been focusing on my A-level subjects at all during the first term of year 13 because I was focusing so much on the BMAT, my personal statement and the interviews. So in my mock exam in January for chemistry, I actually got a D and had to build that back up to an A by the time exams came around. Then I had to really knuckle down and focus on my A-levels, but at this point that felt like a breeze in comparison to all the hoops that you have to jump through to get into medical school. So I did my A-level exams and then tried to forget about results until the end of the summer and I got an A-star in biology and three A's in chemistry, physics and maths. And to be honest, I was over the moon because that was exactly what I needed for Oxford. And that meant that I was going. I worked more hours than I'd ever worked before, but I ended up learning a lot and really, really pushing myself. I think I wouldn't have been able to do it without supportive family and friends. But I think the main thing that got me through was this drive. I remember really, really wanting to get into Oxford more than anything else. That was my high school academic experience. So that's the end of the video. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, let me know.